couple of minutes after six o'clock, so we're going to start all the Johnson City Council work session number 23 10 to order. Sam Walcott, please. Martin. Here. Burkhart. Here. Cope. Ready. Here. Evans. Here. We have three items on the agenda this evening. The first one is, is to discuss the uh, draft 28E agreement with the Johnson Bryan's Metropolitan Fire Department. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, really, after several months of discussions between uh, the elected officials, staff, and the city of Bryan and the city of Johnson, uh, we have reached what I would say is a tentative 28E agreement uh, for fire and EMS services uh, for the Johnson Metropolitan Fire District. Uh, so kind of to change the terminology of the park camp thing. Uh, I do want to take a moment to really thank um, everyone from both the city of Rhines and Gary Johnson that worked on this <coughs> to get us to at this point. We really want to thank Jim Clark uh, to be part of his work on this. His assistance really is critical. We need to so thank you for your assistance. Um, the fire board did meet on May 16th. They did unanimously recommend approval of the general outline of the agreement uh, that was included in the work session packet. I would note subsequent to the fire board meeting, legal counsel in both the city of Bryant and Johnson did meet. Uh, we did refine the agreement, so there's some changes from what was presented in the fire board with. Um, and all that pretty much what was asked with the fire board did review. Um, I kind of hit some of the highlights, um, and if you have specific questions beyond that, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, so one of the concepts is um, administrative city. So we'll change from what we currently have in 2080. Um, under this, um, the administrative city will actually uh, pay that finance, and handle all the financing, uh, and employ all the employees of the district. Uh, employees um, of Johnston, um, excuse me, of Grimes, who will uh, transfer to the administrative city on or about uh, January 1st. And that will really be dependent on Kind of payroll cycle, you want to hit that right so that uh, we'll avoid any payroll reporting uh, city lines of those employees in calendar year 2024. Um, all costs of the district operating capital costs, uh, with the exception of fire prevention personnel costs, will be based on funding formula and that is on change from what currently has. Uh, personnel costs with fire marshal, with deputy fire marshal, with any other. Fire prevention staff will be based on the number of fire prevention activities provided uh, to by each city for the previous fiscal year. And there'll be a true up payment in that curve to, to bring that up. <coughs> uh, equipment. Um, currently, all the equipment that's owned by each city uh, will be initially retained on the equipment. Uh, for expenditures after July 1st, uh, 2023. Um, about five thousand dollars will follow the fire permit, and reality, any equipment, any purchases will follow the fire permit, um, and it will be owned on behalf of the district so the treatment, uh, of each city. On July first of twenty twenty four, so next year, uh, each city can transfer their assets and equipment um, that is solely being used by the district, with the exception of real estate and buildings. <laughs> To the Ministry of City uh, for the benefit of the district itself. So, um, and then there'll be a review of all the equipment that's transferred and the communication center will be reviewed um, between two cities. And then there'll be potentially a true payment um, if that's necessary for the rest of the imbalances. And that can will occur on October 31st. And I mean, if you look at some initial uh, figures, as we think. If there's any imbalance, it could be minimal if we want to manage that. Uh, the fire stations and expenditures, um, the district will operate uh, three fire stations and what we uh, operational costs are based on the formula. So when you eat electricity, vehicle fuel, phones, internet service, computer software, licensing, insurance, consumables, et cetera, um, that will follow the fire formula. Uh, the city of Rhines will be solely responsible for renovation station 37, um, constructing a new stage and having 24 hour staff. Uh, station 38, or was sometimes referred to as middle station, uh, that will be uh, any expenditures that will expand and renovate that. But we discussed uh, with the fire board potentially both cities participating in that. 
uh, especially considering that uh, we may look at adding some elements for job training there, which would make more logical in the cyber location versus um, at either of the other two stations. And then any renovations to the station for the source of the city of Johnson. Now, long term, we've talked, I think, conceptually, does the fire board and district take over the facilities and, and maintenance? But we figured at this point, it's too big of a kind of deal with this. Uh, the agreement is also a 10 year agreement, it starts July 1st, 2023, but it's fired July 30th, 2033. At expiration, the agreement will automatically renew for additional two years, unless either party gives an 18 month notice to terminate. So it is a continuing agreement from that perspective. Uh, just kind of closing, I would note the City of Ryan City Council did approve the general outline agreement at their May 30th meeting. Um, and they formally consider approving uh, the agreement for June 27th meeting. Uh, the city grounds also approved a 90 day extension in case there is uh, some pickup. So the committee would continue um, the opening goal of um, after the session tonight, opening the formal 2018 and then possible extension back uh, to the next council meeting. With that, I'm happy to answer any specific questions. Thank you. So, Mike, just so I'm clear, the city of Grimes tentatively approved it at the May 30th meeting, but that's not officially. They have yeah. not, in, in part, some changes that occurred since that May 30th meeting. Uh, and so, just talking to the council, they they need to go back to the Google and Council. Both uh, their city administrator, Anderson, and the old council, believe at this point that there's going to be issue uh, with the format that's going so the draft that we have does that have the changes in the corporate the minor changes in the corporate yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any red line. But from what the fire board looked at, no, I mean I we did get that copy of the one change, but this was just a clean line copy of this. Could you give us an example of what you think? Um some changes if you look at section um section five related to the fire chief. Uh, if you recall, with the fire board, there were very specific job duties that included in there. Uh, the felt by legal counsel was those could change and want to include them in the 2080 agreement. So those will all take now and then with reference to the fire board, which I'll ensure that ordinances are adopted at each respective city to let you assist in on what the fire, uh, the duties of the fire chief. Uh, the other big change that occurred was related to the Fire Monitor, so page nine, um, number 10. And just to make it clear what, um, what what's being covered and, and what are the activities. So we added some language there and then added music to be to specify that uh, this is kind of the format that we'll look at. But in the end of the day, there is also some ability for the fire to work over time. If there's a different matrix they want to look at on how we're going to do the portion of those costs required for energy services, but they have some that, so that ability to kind of try to get the matrix. So that's just kind of clear, clean up to it, some more definition. Um, and beyond that, it was pretty minor rules. I think both of the changes that you just described make sense to me. Um, I think. <laughs> When when do we uh, anticipate adopting that or having it on our? Um, we anticipate to have it on the June next council meeting start to use. I think just so that we've done our due diligence, we send the red line copy to us. Yeah, we have yeah. seen it. So it's a Have any other questions? I have one quick question. On the five board, you have this thing. The chair and vice chair. Or every three years in the city. What is the situation? It's not that in there for that. You know, I don't, I don't have a good answer for that. I mean, it's in what's been hosting really in the chair. Um, there's no, I don't believe there's kind of a formal in the agreement. Now, the concept behind this and, and why it's really specifying the agreement. Uh, is the question how do we break a tie? Uh, 
Um, and we talk a lot about a lot of different methods of being um, a third party independent person appointed to the board. Uh, there's been seven number. Um, and I think the fear was how do we find someone that has the best interest in the prior activity? Uh, so ultimately, it's kind of decided to uh, actually our legal counsel proceeding uh, uh, suggested that this is a model that's using some other things, some other communities out. Uh, where the uh, chair, I give a super low, uh, if we break it out. Now, the reality is, we think a lot of like the budget, for example. You know, if you have a, uh, a budget that's a table and a wage of like 50%, for example, um, and then the chair decides to break that vote, it'll still ask you about that at the same time. And so, you know, the chair is really never going to do when they want to break it out and they don't want to break it. Um, but again, there's a, there's a rotation and there selects uh, whoever city is appointing them to select who the chairman is going to be themselves in the meetings every two years. Um, and again, it follows kind of the election cycle. So if you have a council member uh, that, that no longer sits on the council, it should have hopefully at the same time uh, that election happens to be a good rotation. And in the thought behind that was again, um, each every two years, who the city has kind of designated that ability to have that extra vote in the memory and high. And so the chair is not there, the vice chair doesn't have that ability. Now, if the chair is not there, you um, may have as well. If, if a member of the party was not there, that only city administrator could step in and be honest. So you could still have a time to vote. Other questions? Comments? Well, I just want to say thank you to you, Mike. All oh, your hard work uh, in this subcommittee. Like, we have been working on the form AD now for, gee, how long? A couple of years? Yeah, over a year. Yeah, and uh, Kevin and I like we were making some progress and help out a little bit and we might come on board and we kind of shut it loose again. Because of Mike's good work, or, you know, largely because of Mike's good work, or where I have to we're at. We are at where we're at today. So I just want to thank him. And then everybody also saw good efforts in, in getting us there as well. Uh, we've had a recent change on the fire board representation. We had a student, Martin, uh, helped carry the laboring war for, for a long time and that uh, helped us help us get to this point. And we've uh, got uh, Councilman Burkhardt has now stepped in. And even in the short time that he's been, on my left. Maybe he was simply so. I, you know, I, I'm really, I'm really pleased with where we're at with this. A lot of, a lot of good effort on having this part. And Councilman Evans also was representing the committee. It took a lot of hard work on everybody's application to like that. I'm, uh, I'm excited for the council to take some final action on it uh, here within the next month. So. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. Any other comments? If not, we will go to the next agenda item, which is the presentation from RDG on the preliminary design concept of ground point science. Excuse me, Mayor, before we go there, uh, the microphones on this side of the desk are not working. You've powered up. All three of them. Great. Please unplug them for now. Maybe. Nope. Mike's got come back up. Yeah, I'm sure. But maybe I'll see if I'll post it in the comments.
Good evening. Uh, appreciate the, the time to be able to go through some of the work that we've been doing with uh, the Crown Point. Just as a reminder, back in 2014, we had some preliminary design concepts that uh, we looked at and we uh, tried to pull together a new and improved Crown Point. Over the last three months, uh, we worked with RPG and Snyder and Associates on a smaller scale into looking at that 2014 plan and then to expand it to what the needs are right now. So with us this evening is Matt Cohen with RPG, if you can take us through a little presentation. Thank you very much, John. Uh, thank you, Mayor and members of the Council. Uh, it's a uh, privilege to be here. Uh, it's a privilege to be working on this project. Uh, Tara Park is really come a long ways uh, in the last uh, decade. Um, and some of the things that you'll see in this presentation uh, were visions at that time. And it kind of feels like this is a crown jewel uh, component of the, uh, the park in that area. Um, so what we're going to take you through is the evolution of this design um, since that initial study in 2013-2014. Uh, and then more recently, there's been several meetings. Uh, we had a meeting at the end of April uh, with the Parks Board and the Senior Commission. Uh, we followed that up with a meeting with the uh, that was specific to the seniors uh, users of the facility um, in early May, May 11th. And we'll be planning on doing a full blown public meeting uh, on June 20th. So coming right up, um, that's going to be tentatively scheduled for six o'clock. Um, and let me just see if I let's see. Do I just scroll on again? Yeah, okay, scroll. All right, perfect. Technology. All right, so just a real quick recap on the master plan uh, outcomes uh, from just about 10 years ago. And a number of these were related to the site. And as I mentioned, many of these have been completed. Uh, the exception was the West Viewing Deck. So that is part of the project that we've incorporated uh, into the project. Really, all of these other items have been uh, addressed in one way or another uh, through the various projects. But we had done a deep dive uh, in 2013, 2014 uh, as well of what are the types of activities uh, that would be uh, desired for the facility. And we found that these have largely held up uh, in the conversations with the ones, the bottom five or six uh, game room uh, on really being specific to the project that you're going to see this evening. All right. So the building program itself, the building uh, as it exists uh, today uh, is about uh, it's a little, it's just a little under 12,000 uh, square feet. Um, the addition uh, will take it up to just about 15,000 square feet total. The uses within the, the project uh, will include offices for the parks and rec staff. Um, lots of uh, improvements in, in this addition related to the public uses uh, as well. The integration of a, a coordinator office, a, a building supervisor station that's a little bit more open um, to the lobby space. Uh, so you can see that coming and going with people uh, and help people feel welcome when they enter the building. The senior meals program will continue and uh, some expanded uses uh, on the lower level. And then public rental options, that will be a big component of the expansion uh, of the space in the large common area on the first floor, as well as the lower level. Um, and then needing to accommodate catered events, there won't be meal preparation in the facility, but there'll be uh, catered events uh, within the facility uh, and educational program. So the site, as you all are aware, the pickleball courts and the improvements to the tennis courts are underway. Uh, construction is moving along uh, nicely on that, and that is a separate construction contract uh, on that particular portion of the project. Uh, north is up on this drawing uh, with the lake uh, over in the upper left uh, corner of the drawing, and the proposed addition is where you're seeing the red box. 
So one of the things we'll dive into a little bit more detail on is uh, we will provide access, not unlike your facility here, where you have uh, access to rest of the facilities uh, for the public from the outside of the building. Uh, that will be something that will accommodate um, this building as well. Uh, so folks after hours utilizing uh, the pickleball courts and tennis courts will have access there. So just a bird's eye view uh, from the north and west, uh, looking back, and this is with the addition on the project, and you can see the relationship to the existing tennis courts there. And just zooming in a little bit uh, on those relative parts and pieces, you can see that the, the scale of the addition not only includes that 1,600 square foot approximate uh, footprint of an addition of interior space on two levels, but also expands that deck uh, to face west uh, as well. So we definitely want to take a nod uh, and move the building to be within the, the architectural character and family uh, of the other improvements that have been made to uh, Terra Lake and Terra Park. So the limestone, the buff colors uh, are all things we're proposing uh, we introduce into this project as well. And you can see the relative relationship of those parts. So the first view of the exterior uh, as proposed, so we're looking at the southeast side of the building uh, in this case, but largely what uh, exists there today. And one thing you're not seeing on here, there will uh, be a study of uh, TV panels uh, for the roof for solar uh, power as well. Uh, we're working through those details right now with the mechanical uh, electrical engineering team. Uh, but there would be improvements to the, uh, the deck along the south side of the building, and then as it wraps around to the west side uh, with the new deck and addition. So this does bring us to the west view from the lake, looking back at the building. And again, proposing the buff limestone, actually proposing painting the brick, uh, a color that's a little bit more in character uh, with the other structures uh, in the park. And then, and then integrating some of that steel uh, trellis type work that you saw uh, in the park as well. And there's also a, a large patio proposed for the uh, the ground for the block out uh, on that lower level. The building program, just to jog your memories a little bit, uh, there had been a need for uh, education lab and education storage. Those uses have changed a little bit. So we, we have flipped the restroom to be outboard uh, in the proposed design. Uh, which will provide that access from both inside and outside to a common hallway. And then that also had previously limited our uh, layout of the uh, of that flexible meeting room. So in the revised plan, you see those restrooms have gone outboard to have this this door would lock after hours and you have access to this these restrooms. Uh, after hours, but otherwise access from both sides during the day. And again, uh, the idea that we could have a flexible meeting room for about 25 people on each side uh, with entries on both both sides uh, as revised. And then that puts storage type spaces, mechanical spaces uh, in work. The other functional elements of this lower level are the uh, expanded cardio room. Uh, the existing quilting room uh, will be going upstairs, which will provide a, a large fitness studio in the northeast corner here. And then mechanicals are kind of buried and integrated uh, where they are currently uh, on the northwest corner. So the main level, uh, this is what you saw uh, back in 2014. Uh, the first thing that got our attention that we had concerns about is you have this beautiful lake and we had located a storeroom uh, out to that view. Um, so we have brought the storeroom inboard. Uh, we had also not uh, expanded the restrooms to provide accessibility uh, at that point to today's standards. So these have been revised uh, to uh, meet those requirements. 
And then there's been some reconfiguration to improve circulation into uh, the other functional uh, rooms on the east side of the building. So I'll show you that here. Here's the revised plan. So you can see reaching out to the lake, really expanding the rentable uh, and usability uh, of the, the banquet type room, uh, the, the activities room. Um, the catering kitchen, as noted, storage uh, comes inboard uh, in this case, and the improved uh, restrooms here. Now, I will note that since our last meeting, we have found a way to get an extra picture uh, into these restrooms, uh, which was a, a comment from the public uh, that we received at the last meeting. And then we reduce the size of the game room a little bit, um, but that provides a little bit more of a direct access to the booking room. That doesn't require going through other spaces, uh, which was the case in the previous plan. And then we have a conference room, small library space, and then that activities um, coordinator uh, as well, and a workroom board. So what these spaces are going to look like interior-wise, this is the existing condition of that main hall. We will be pulling elements from the uh, surroundings for our interior palette. And this is just to give you a sense of scale for what was compared to what will be. So that dashed line shows the extent of the existing building. And this is actually from another direction. I got a little bit out of order, but um, so this is from standing in the addition, looking back to the east. So that area that had been storage before now, also part of the, the banquet space, the catering kitchen with a large serving window. Uh, opposite the fireplace. And one thing we heard a lot about was sound control in this space. So we'll be improving that with uh, felt baffles on the roof, on the ceiling. And I guess we just missed that one slide. So I'll just uh, pause here again. <laughs> Imagine it without the shaded area. Uh, you'll get the sense of the scale of that space. And then going downstairs, um, just to show the uh, that flexible meeting space, which about 25 people per side, could swell a little bit if there weren't tables uh, in there. And that space could be demised into two meeting rooms. Again, windows out to the lake into the park. Where we are today, we are just wrapping up with schematic design. We are continuing to integrate uh, public comment. Um, we'll be moving into the design development phase, meaning uh, the finalization of systems and some of those other details. Uh, ultimately, uh, looking for a uh, early 2024 start for construction, uh, and anticipating about a year for construction. With that, welcome to questions. Thank you. I've got any questions for Matt? Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Good question. Any kind of design really looks good. I love that design. So one question is then on the West Exterior view, if you put it on page uh, 14. There we go. On the south side, is that a shared area or is that over there? So right now it is open, uh, but as we've worked through the um, solar array, one of the future designs that you'll see is an idea that may incorporate uh, PV panels, photovoltaic panels as a shading device as well. We're not getting to the coverage that we need yet. So that would be a strategy to both provide shade and power uh, over that area. Excellent. Sure. I really want to do that. Anyway, I'll ask you what I get. Yeah, okay. Sure. Other questions? I do have a question. Um, I know that we, one of our former 
city council members made a point of asking for full size changing adult size changing tables in the restroom. Is this building going to have one somewhere? Yes, we will accommodate. And you're painting the fireplace in the main room? We are proposing painting the brick throughout. Kind of a foreboding color, less welcoming uh, as well. So I never, until you showed those existing pictures, I didn't realize how chunky uh, that fireplace uh, looks in those those photos. Yeah. Um, and I, I think I guess I can probably see that. Yeah, there's the before. Any questions, Council? I just remember my question. Uh, so, with respect to the family store and the, uh, the, the mm -hmm. when does that support to be completed and how is this? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always hate to say things too public with this because I don't want to get people excited. Um, we uh, are still saying October 1st, although the groundwork has been complete for about a week and a half now. Um, if the asphalt is late, it is currently curing. They're expecting the surface people to be out either the very end of June or early July to put the surface. In the meantime, right now, they have built the retaining wall. It's complete now. Um, this week, they'll be bringing in the concrete. So they'll be putting the viewing station, the sidewalks, all that will be going in. Um, we'll start looking at getting um, the fences up, and then they'll do that. Um, the only piece of the project that won't be done at this point is the landscape and seating that's going to need to wait till it cools off again in the fall. Um, in the perfect world, they'll be playing the by the middle of July. Yeah, the question I would leave you was that your, your construction for this whole design is starting in January 24, mm -hmm. in January 25, right? So the things so will that be a hindrance to school construction and access to the things so will be hindrance? We we will minimize that impact as much as possible. There'll still be access and it will be an active construction site, but we'll make sure the trail uh retains access uh to be the next place. You know, taking our lot here since the parking lot in front of that and that construction is like mm -hmm. parking there, and then you'll have people coming to play tennis and pick a ball with the same parking lot. Yeah, correct. Yeah. There will, there will be some overlap, unfortunately. You want to prove that one and a half. One of the, one of the keys, and I'll steal the microphone for the point. Don't need it in there. So you can hear. Is it, if, you're, if you're in the parking lot, part of the key is you're going to be able to move the trail system to get out away from the building and then come down below it. So. I think you're going to be able to miss out on where any staging for construction will be. Okay. Uh, that's good. Thank you. So, John, kind of related to that question, I'm to smell, but how about the senior program during the remodeling? What, what's going to happen with the senior program? Part of that is going to be based on working with the construction. Um, we've been in communication, obviously, Polk County has been involved with this process through the last uh, four or five months, so they know the process. Um, the goal is going to be to keep a space available. Um, they've already indicated that if they have to convert to exclusively sack lunches, they can convert to that. They can convert if they have to do pick up and go meals, they'll be able to convert to that. Uh, the goal is to have some space for them. I think the biggest key is going to be restrooms. Um, we might be able to keep an area open as far as playing cards and that, but we really can't be open if we don't have restroom space. So I think that's what you happens here temporarily with relocating them to the library or that, that all of those options are going to be there. Um, as we get further into this, um, we'll be able to start communication with churches, those types of sure. very similar to as I said before my time that back in 2011 with the remodel that happened there. Uh, there was a period, I think, three to six months that they were moved to a, a church for a period of time. 
Well, Matt and John, um, I didn't, I saw this, this uh, slide deck about a week ago for the first time, and I was so excited when I saw it. Uh, I know that we've, you know, we've been, we've been, the vision for this was laid out 10 years ago, as you, as you said, and uh, you know, we're finally at that point where it's going to happen. And it is going to serve so many critical needs in this community, you know, from the senior program to the nonprofit groups like the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts that need a, need a meeting space, as well as just an, an event space for people in our community. I mean, this is this is going to be amazing, and it's going to be used so much by so many people throughout our community. I mean, it's, it's, it's really exciting. But it was even more exciting for me to see what the new new uh, concept designs were because I. You know, I had this vision that we were just going to expand the look that we have, which is old and dreary. Yeah. 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 Um, and the fact that this, you know, what's being proposed here is going to fit in so nicely with all the other infrastructure, you know, improvements that we made um, at Terry Park. So, um, yeah. you know, again, I think we're going to have a community that is just going to be, you know, really pleased with, you know, this new facility. I'm going to call it a new facility. That were the kind of big creative Thank you, good work. Well, we applied the vision and thanks for that clean work. Appreciate it. And I'll give a, a shout out to Matt and his team. Uh, I mean, this is the fifth time I think we've done a presentation with this, and it's, every single time there's a little bit of feedback that occurs, and his team has taken that feedback and incorporated it into this. Um, something that's not shown on here, but uh, uh, will be true to. Uh, Rhonda's part is uh, we're looking at all black being bird friendly black as we install. So um, we've got a lot of that technology that they've been working on and uh, we'll incorporate those into this facility. I I really appreciate that you are looking into that. And uh, I think that that fits the direction our community wants to go in, and especially at a site like this. Um, I don't know what the difference in cost will be, but I will say that we have got a new building at Iowa State, the Veterinary Diagnostic Clinic, or lab, and it's got uh, the bird safe windows on the main front of the building. Um, and these are the windows that are the biggest, you know, uh, there's a clear corridor behind them, so they give an appearance of transparency. And so uh, we made the decision that the, the bird safe windows were on that. There are small windows in the back on the loading area. They're not bird safe windows because you know, it's 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 a, you know yeah. if, if, so what I'm trying to get to is I think bird safe windows is the correct what route to go. Mm -hmm. But if there's some small windows in the back, and we're talking about thousands of dollars in difference. Um, it's most important in those big, wide open areas where you can see through the building or if the birds are going to think they can go through there. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to leave it to the architect uh, to use his best judgment um, on that. And I will tell the rest of you that uh, the bird tape glass is a very thin line. Nobody has ever complained yet that they're too obstructing. Yeah, I think there is a, the key to this building is going to be the south and west. That's where it's going to be most visually open. It's going to be visually open from the outside to the inside, um, especially that south side and for, for winter birds. They tend to congregate over there and try to uh, stay out of the cold weather. Right. So I think those so, two areas are the key areas. I think, you know, there should be some discussion about where our dollars are going to do the most good. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody have one remaining item on the agenda this evening, and that is an update on the 2023-24 strategic plan. Mayor and Council, um, yeah, so it's kind of just wanted to do a quick update on some of the progress uh, that is being made on the, the strategic plan, if you recall. In December, the council approved uh, the 2023-2024 strategic plan. 
Uh, there are 39 rules and objectives that are helpfully in the plan uh, in nine different options and areas. And what I would say is we're well pretty much on track. Uh, a lot of the areas that see the virus areas of this African and this lead and the real on that and reporting that it's on that is on track. And it might be a guess that's pretty uh included around what you can think of the number of rules. I mean everything you can have instructions at times. Uh, but things like implementing new technology or PD, we have that budgeted uh, for the next fiscal year. So I don't know if there's ongoing progress being made. Um, continuing to expand the facilities in Northwest Kansas City, you know, we're moving on track. In fact, today there's an item on the council agenda that approves some of the standard sewer extensions. And then working to hire neighborhood staff and use money to get forward and support the community on. Uh, run housing or the down the hiring process for the neighborhood center. So um, I think there's a lot of good highlights in there and good options to read through it all. Um, I think there's a lot of good work for us to have this when uh, we have. Uh, but we did want to highlight uh, and then be able to answer the question in those areas that uh, are reported as having some disruption or major disruption. You know, as we put this together, you know, I really encourage staff to be honest, you know, a good, you know, good reflection of what's going on on each of these operational items. And if there's a disruption, that's not a bad thing, it's just acknowledging that uh, there's areas that we're going to work through. So I'm going to start out um, and uh, I'll get my items that, that I have uh, operation control over that clear some of the ocean. Uh, I am uh, the first one I could say the develop the five-year master plan. And uh, really, as we move to other operational areas or other obstacles, including uh, working on the budget and passing the this year and this month in 2018, it's kind of sort of a But we do um, plan to continue to work on it. And, uh, at this point, we're planning in the third quarter of this year to provide that uh, master plan and uh, so council can start looking at it and really, I guess, it before the uh, budget season starts for the next fiscal um, And there's also developed staffing and funding plans so that would be. Uh, also, happening in that same point, uh, we don't know if that's more than uh, public safety on uh, that operation. Mm -hmm. uh, the other item that I had in this was finalizing the 2018 associated JG and FB. Obviously, we're, we've had some instruction rules to have uh, January 1st to have a draft completed, but we need to work on that. Uh, so, that had a really good trigger as a minor disruption. Uh, but we are working towards Google, any questions on those specific items? Oh, as I'm just going to start treating myself. And like I said, this is not, again, um, it, I, we're highlighting the very good um, but there, there's a lot of good stuff that staff is really, we felt it was high at all. Acknowledge and, and discuss and we have also put uh, any of those items. So I'm just going to add first if you want to talk about the formalization of the prison detention expansion program. Okay, hold on. Oh, there's a little sheet. Uh, yeah, talking about the BRA plan to date, uh, we brought on board here. We've been here for the last six months. Uh, he is working through a list um, of all businesses in Johnson. We're carrying that down to want to have a significant employment presence uh, or some sort of physical uh, commercial space in Johnson and kind of prioritize those three different groups. Ones that we'd like to have an annual visit with uh, some sort of consortium of the Greater Development uh, Partnership. Perhaps IEDA, ones that we would like to try to have meet with once uh, every year, or once every two years, uh, because they have importance to us. Uh, community regards, there's more of a statewide or regional perspective. And ones that we just want to make sure we have good contact with, which uh, uh, haven't been productive, make sure they feel welcome and have contact with the city and not to rise. So he's just about got that list finalized, uh, and the hearing starts. Uh, initiation of that plan and scheduling visits from the uh, later this month. Uh, mm -hmm. 
So we're a little behind the ball, I think, of where we're looking to be today, but uh, there's some progress on that before we have a more formalized approach towards the hour going forward. I'll cut off five minutes on that. Uh, now, what's update on broadband? Uh, MetroNet is very close to building a house in um, their service area here. You know, they're very active in the community and event sponsorships. I think they want to get back to the see the next one. Um, that's probably the next month. I'm going to look at the more specifics of where they are and where are they not built out in. They didn't quite achieve their two year build out goal, which is what they laid out for us in the payment community. Um, but their footprint, I think. Expanded beyond what they're initially intending to as well. Uh, into all of the metro with the exception of what's the one. Um, so there's some specialized areas, a few areas that have limited developments uh, that they're not in, which means there's probably hundreds of green residents in Johnson that don't have access to any fiber connection in the community. Uh, most of those are north along one or north along. Uh, drive corridors. Uh, there's a lot of additional areas that have private drives or apartment complexes uh, where there's not a public railway in constructing uh, their fiber. For those instances, they have to negotiate access to those special treatment areas through the association or the property owner. Uh, they typically only have selected one service provider, uh, so they have to provide service in that area unless the service or the is provided. Uh, beyond that, there's some conversation about getting fiber into the home. You know, that's something we look at a little bit as part of our zoning code process updates to show the fiber actually inside the city walls. Uh, and then also that there was a fiber provider um, contacted and contracted with to build out in each subdivision. Uh, I don't think we may have some more details on that, but I know we run into state legislative obstacles and stuff with requiring. Fiber as part of the subdivision system as qualifies that type of utility. I get my language quite quite clear, David. So I don't believe we're able to regulate that as part of our subdivision code or we do state as part of the green process and new subdivision uh, or encourage people uh, as they develop out to have uh, contact with the three or four new providers out there. Uh, so there is a type of provider available to those new residents in the uh, but we don't have a good uh, solution requiring that. Okay. If you want to just put this on the screen. Yeah, we can do it was uh, discussed obviously in the top plan and then again in the strategic planning as a, as a new recommendation as we worked through the budget this past year. Um, you know, there were other studies that came prior to before us, so um, that will be a request to bring back the next funding cycle. Okay, thank you. Um, Um, as far as sustainability, uh, um, I think we need just a little bit more direction. I'll be honest, I have not worked on this at this point yet. Um, I think maybe some initial conversation for the quality of life committee. Um, you know, uh, Councilwoman uh, Martin, kind of your concept and idea of moving forward and invite you to one of those meetings and, and have a discussion on. Uh, a little bit of direction um, where we want to go. I know we've looked at some different options with this as far as joint, a uh, joint person amongst uh, other communities, um, trying to pull uh, some of our staff time to maybe direct towards this. So just a little bit more direction with uh, where the council wants to go with this type of uh, role or position would be good. Thank you. I know Molly's not here from the library. I did have a conversation with her on two as she's putting this together. Um, on the ESL, you know, they are doing some ESL programming in the library now. 
Um, they don't know if they're going to be full extensive to the AI and the execution plan. Um, but that is an item they have for actually success and the community out. Um, and then exploring solar stations, uh, they're looking at some farming opportunities. I know uh, the, there are some farming options, but I'm not sure what these are, but we'll explore those and you know, other students in this. Um, Matt, you want to hit a little bit on the facility that is more of the police fire type, uh, not police fire, but also public facilities. Yeah, this is the uh, area out in the northwest annexation area. They're looking at maybe trying to look for a spot for facilities in the future for not only police fire, but public works and parks. Um, we kind of slowed down a little bit with the proposed annexation of Granger. Um, that does affect those facilities and what those locations would be. So we kind of um, slowed down a little bit on that. So that's why it's seen a little disruption. At the time we had that goal in mind, we were still growing northwest. So that's the disruption that we would have think under there. Thank you. And Janet, you want to? I think the only um, one I had for construction was uh, talking about the community survey and how we can look at some of those results, especially in the open ended questions, since there are a lot of pages we haven't gone through that and what um, we're going to do for that. So, um, one of the things I think a big thing on there was the floor provided to talk about the study um, push information out there to inform us and kind of what we're doing some of the open ended questions because. We will have a survey again next spring. So um, I'm sure those open ended questions will come in similar as they did a year prior. So I'm just working that. Now I know a couple years ago we did some videos um, with the council members, the ones that sit on the committees, um, pushing information out about that. So um, those were well received, but I don't know if the analytics were as high as we were hoping. Um, so maybe we create some graphics around this that will kind of draw more people in so to uh, create all of these engagement. I guess with that, um, I think even if you've heard all of the disruptions, there's still a lot of good progress on each of these uh, plan items. So I, I really applaud staff and the workers and the staff that they every day or chip away on these plans along with their day to day. So good work going on. So I'm not sure if you guys have any specific questions or if this is the type of format you want to. Listening to these or just a written format is fine. I guess we'd like some feedback on how we want to uh, kind of receive these portal web pages and the line I'm not sure uh, how this is going to go. How my fellow council people or mayor want the updates, but I did appreciate what you provided and the percentage. Mm -hmm. It was very well organized and easy to walk through. And I didn't speak up at the time when uh, John was up here about the sustainability director, but I, while we're still talking about that, uh, I found I got an email in my inbox after Memorial Day, after Memorial Day the weekend, and it was about a grant uh, that was out there uh, that would support a lot of tree planting, and uh, there was only three days in which to get the grant done. It was impossible to get it done. Federal grant. But I did find out that other cities, they also found out about this, but in a month earlier. And we're looking at a million point eight. The city of Ames was asking for money to hire additional people to work in the parks to increase their tree planting programs by double what they're currently doing. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is again, I think we'll find that if we did get a sustainability person, director, whatever you want to talk about, there is work for them, plenty of work uh, and opportunities that were possibly missing. If we had someone that that was also part of their description. So thank you. <laughs> Other comments? Well, Mike, I'll just add on to what John uh, Arnold's Councilwoman uh, Martin said about the information that's been presented to us. I, I found this very helpful, very user friendly. Um, it gave us a lot of information in just a very brief form, so we had a good idea 
uh, you know, where your staff is and all these uh, these projects. So I I would encourage you to continue to present to us in this call. Okay, well, with that, we've only got three minutes before the next next meeting. So, if there's nothing else to come before the next meeting, the work session, we will adjourn the work session and uh, get started at seven o'clock.